One of the most important things to do when creating a new game project is to play test your game. And it is especially important to play test on the target device as early and as often as possible in order to best replicate the experience that your end users will have when playing your game. Most of the time when you deploy to a target device, you'll find that the experience is a little bit different than what you're used to in the editor. And it's going to require some fine tuning. So today I've set up this little demo project where we can demonstrate some of the considerations that you'll need to make when you're play testing on your target device. I'm also gonna be showing you how to resolve some of those issues using the sponsor of today's video, the Jaro console. The Jaro console is a debug console we can use to check and modify things in our game. And its visual interface is especially nice for debugging when you're on mobile devices, which is what we're gonna be doing today. You can get the Jaro console in the Unity Asset Store using the links in the description below. So once you've picked up the Jaro console off the Unity Asset Store, the next thing that we're gonna to need to do is of course bring it into Unity. So per usual, we'll just go up to Window and Package Manager. On the Packages dropdown, make sure we go to My Assets and then scroll down to find the Jaro console. Once you've done that, just go ahead and click Download and then Import and make sure you import all the files into your current project. Once you've done that up in the top menu of Unity, you'll now see Tools and an option for Jaro Settings so you can go ahead and open that. And then this is where we can kind of configure some of the main general settings about the Jaro console. Here's pretty much the main one that you need to worry about is the enable Jaro option. You can either enable or disable Jaro with that simple checkbox right there. Basically the Jaro console is used for debugging. So you wanna have it enabled when you're testing your game. And then when you wanna make a final build of your game to actually give to other people who aren't necessarily going to be doing debugging in your game, you can just uncheck this enable Jaro checkbox and then that will exclude the Jaro console from future builds of your game. So for now, of course, I'm gonna be showing you off the Jaro console, so we'll leave it enabled. And then if you want, you can go check out these other options for different ways to launch the console or what assemblies that it applies to. But for the most part, you can just leave the defaults as is. All right, so once we've done that, when we enter play mode in our game, we now see this new little icon on our screen here. And we can actually drag this wherever we want on the screen, so we'll just leave it in the upper right for now. And when we actually click on this icon, you'll see that we launch into the Jaro console here. Um, so this is it. Basically, there are two modes. So this is kind of the console mode where you can type commands in. And there's also the visual mode where um, we can actually just basically tap on these little icons. And this is what we're gonna be using when we actually do some debugging on our target device. And you can see that I've added in a couple commands here and we'll get to all these in a moment. But real quick, I would just like to show you how you can add new commands to the Jaro console. So the first thing that you'll need to do is add in the using Jaro console namespace. Once you've done that, it's gonna allow us to add some new attributes to our public functions here. So all we're gonna do before one of our functions is add this new attribute, which is going to be the Jaro command. And then within here, we're going to define the name of the command. So this one is going to be the refill health command. And optionally after that, we can specify a description as well as a category. And so basically you can put this Jaro command attribute over any function that's a public function and it returns either void or string. Now I've created this one class just to manage all these Jaro commands. So there's one kind of central place if I need to modify any of these, but they can be in any class that you want. So for example, here's a difficulty controller class and I have this uh, set difficulty method, which we're gonna be looking into later. You'll see that it does have the Jaro command attribute above it. The one thing that you should be aware of though is if you do have multiple instances of the same class, when you run the command, it's going to run that command on all instances that are active in your game. All right, so now I've created a little build of my game and I have it running on my phone. Um, so as you'll see, we do have this kind of little uh, tilde key here for the Jaro console. Again, we can just drag that into the upper right for now. Let's go ahead and hit play to go ahead and play our game. So you'll see that the camera's gonna move over here and move behind our player here. And so now that we're in our game, let's go ahead and run some commands. So as you'll see that our health is at 50 out of 100. So let's go ahead and refill our health just using that uh, last command that we did. So again, just go ahead and open up the tilde key for the Jaro console there. And again, we can just go back and forth between if we wanna do um, the you know traditional text enter method for entering commands, or if we wanna do the visual method. The visual method works really well for uh, mobile devices, so we'll go ahead and use that here. So when we're over on the visual side, we can go ahead and just click the refill health button here, and then go ahead and submit. And then you'll see if we go back over to the console side, you'll see that the refill health command has been run. So now we'll just close out with the X on the bottom, and you'll see that our health is at 100 out of 100 now. So anyways, now let's kind of go run around in our world. So as you can see, we're just kind of running around through here. Um, we have a this jump button, so we can kind of jump a little bit. 
um, you know, maybe we want to change that a little bit. So let's say that we want our game to kind of feel like it's playing on the moon. So we can maybe set one of the global variables like gravity. So I've created this other Jaro command for set gravity. And when we click on the set gravity, it actually brings up a little window for us to modify these values. So we can just go ahead and click on the zero here, and then it will bring us this little dialog box. And so we can set this to 0 0.5, and then we'll just submit that. Now when we run around and jump, you see that we're gonna start jumping a little bit higher and fall a little bit slower because we've set the gravity down to a 0.5 scale. Another thing we might wanna do is set the move speed of our player. Again, this is just kind of one of those player feel things and you really wanna feel what your game plays like when you're playing on the device. So now when we're running, we we'll see that we're at half speed right now and we're kind of slow motion running. And of course we can also change that in the other direction. So if we go ahead and say set move speed, um, another thing that we can do is that we can actually tap on here and kind of drag the values left and right to get a bigger or smaller number. So, you know, let's go, you know, let's go like real big with the move speed. Let's put it up to like 18 here and uh, let's just see where this, oh, okay. And then we fell through the world. So that was not exactly what we wanted to do. So luckily I've created another command here where we can just go here. And then for scene management, we can just hit reload level and submit. And then you'll see that when we close out of here, we're just back to the main menu screen here. Now, another good thing to keep an eye on when you're testing on your device is what your UI sizing looks like. So over here under the UI category, I have the HUD scale. So we can click on that and we can change the HUD scale. So maybe I think it looked pretty good for now, but let's see what it looks like if it's a little bit bigger, say like 1.5. So we could submit that. You'll see that now the uh, UI is a little bit bigger. You know, everything is just kind of, you know, 1.5 times what it was. Also, if we want, we can go ahead and change this to a smaller value, you know, like 0.75, something like that. Go ahead and submit that and close out. And now you'll see that the UI is much smaller and it's out of the way. I kind of like that a little bit better. Now, another thing that you really want to do is look at balance. Like how is your game balanced? How does it play at different difficulty levels? So for example, let's say that we have a couple enemies over here. They're just kind of, you know, swaying back and forth right now doing their thing. But I do have another command for set difficulty. So we can go ahead and uh, set the difficulty from easy, say to a medium difficulty. We'll go ahead and submit that. And then when we come back here, you see that now we have a couple more enemies. So the game is, you know, a little bit more difficult. And then, you know, let's get real crazy here. We'll go to set difficulty and we'll set this to nightmare mode. So go ahead and submit. And now we just have a ton of enemies everywhere. So this is something that's, you know, kind of fun to play around with that now we have, you know, all these enemies that are even stacked on top of each other. And then, you know, if that's too many enemies for you, you know, one thing that you might want to do is enable God mode. Of course, God mode is a, you know, classic video game cheat mode as you can see in the upper left hand corner, we now have infinite health and infinite ammo. So that should be plenty to take on all these baddies over here. But I'm actually going to take it off God mode for now to kind of show you another thing here. So of course, when you're debugging, one thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you know actually do some debugging and maybe look at some log messages. So luckily we can do that with the Jaro console. Um, so for example, you do see that I have this shoot button in the lower right hand corner. So we can say, uh, fire this a couple times. You'll see that nothing's really looking like it's happening. You do see the ammo count is going down by one every time I tap on that, but uh, nothing else is really happening. So maybe we can pop open the Jaro console here and see what's going on. So we actually go over to the console side You'll see all the other previous commands that I've entered in on the visual side, but now you'll see that we get all these null reference exceptions. And basically over here, you know, we get full debug messages from the Unity game engine, and we can actually click on one of these null reference exceptions, and it gives us the full stack trace of where the error is in our code. And you'll see that this is being called in the on button shoot method. Now, let's say maybe you're testing this on the go, you're not near your computer and you can't necessarily do some debugging to change it right away. So of course you can press and hold on here. You can either copy the message directly or hit the share button if you do wanna send that directly to yourself or someone else on your team who might be able to properly handle that error message that you're getting. So anyways, that's a brief overview of the Jaro console. Remember, if you do use it and you do plan on bringing your game to a commercial release and you don't want necessarily people to be messing around with your debug options, make sure you just go ahead and disable the Jaro console before creating that final build of your game. Anyways, I hope you found today's video useful, just kind of thinking of some of the considerations that you need to make when you're play testing your game, um, actually on a target device, and kind of showing you how you can use something like the Jaro console to actually do some debugging and you know figure out 
what are things going on in your game and be able to make you know small little corrections and adjustments to really get that gameplay feel feeling correctly making sure everything looks correctly in your game etc and once again thank you to the developers of the jaro console for sponsoring today's video and of course you can go ahead and check it out in the unity asset store using the links down in the description below anyways if you did find today's video helpful i'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on video game development of course if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos you can always leave those down in the comments section below. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.